Has anyone ever noticed that the rock formations in the chasm look very similar to the sustainer's cubes? And has anyone remembered that in Conria's fall, the cube magic that we first saw were not really attacking or destroying anything in Conria? If you did, well, now we can talk about it. If not, then you might want to watch and find out. In the deepest part of the chasm where the floating nail resides, you can find these rock formations that, if taken a closer look, seems to be made out of other smaller cubes or box-shaped rocks. This is just a toss in the dark thought, but what if the sustainer was helping the old world when the second heavenly war happened? I mean, we know next to nothing about this floating unknown god. So theories and speculations about her or it can basically be anything. Now this video is going to focus on similarities between the sustainer's magic and the chasm situation, as well as other possible events where she might have been present, why the sustainer would be a good deity, and what exactly is her job as the sustainer of the heavenly principles. This will be a more loose and unstructured video, so I won't be showing too many references and will be focused more on narrative conjecture. So on with the video. The two possible proofs, if you can call it that, for the sustainer being a good um, deity is that the cube magic she has looks oddly similar to the rocks in the chasm and the fact that we and our siblings saw the fall of Conria when it was destroyed, as well as the travelers themselves not being outright killed or disposed of at the beginning scene. If you can remember the quest with Dane's Leaf, and we had a little flashback of Conria, at first glance it looks like the sustainer or whoever made these cubes were responsible and looked like it was wrapping or attacking the city, and that it was the sustainer who was responsible for its destruction. But if you look more closely, the movements of these cubes is slower and seems to show it doing something different to what we saw in our fight with the sustainer. The cubes aren't erratic or aggressive in its movements, and it's not pursuing anything as well. It's like they're just there waiting or maybe defending the city. I won't say that the sustainer herself was defending the city, but I will say that the cube magic was there and it looked idle or it was waiting for something to happen. You can see how the cube magic looks when chasing the travelers in the intro and its movements are not the same here in Conria. But where it does look like it's pursuing or defending something, is in the chasm. If you start from this point of the chasm and slowly make your way to the nail, you'll find these cube formations snaking and slithering around you, almost as if it was going to a certain location. Here specifically, you can see the spiraling movement of the rocks similar to how the cube magic moves. And in this location, right before you see the nail, you can see the cubes merge into one big chunk and then split out into different paths, much like it was surrounding the nail or possibly keeping it from falling. Once you are inside the chamber, you can see all the other cubes forming the same way the sustainer did to both the sibling travelers and is especially prominent near the nail itself. It's as if the cubes were slowly trying to cover the nail but it didn't reach it quick enough. Remember that time when our hands were caught by the sustainer and then the cubes started appearing and eating us whole? Well that's basically what I think is happening to the nail. So theoretical story time. Think of the cubes condensing into a swirling ball and in the middle of it was the nail while it was either falling from the sky or just as it reached the ground. All the while, more and more of the cube snakes were covering it up. As the nail was nearing the ground or almost touching it, the cubes kept it from hitting, therefore possibly keeping it from acting out its effects. Probably similar to Vindagnir, but instead of the nail falling straight into the mountain, it was being stopped by the cubes. So over time, more and more cubes converged and kept it from merely touching the chasm's land. And as it was keeping it from touching, the cubes was also doing the that thing that it did with the siblings where it started to eat it whole. For some reason, however, it couldn't overwhelm the nail and possibly it just exploded then and there, which I think would explain why the cubes were rock formations instead of actual cube magic. It was nullified or solidified similar to how Zhong Li can solidify his enemies with his ult. And the only point of entry into that nail is that small hole where all the cube magics were slowly converging from. The damage that the nail caused, however, was still devastating as Vindagnir, and the people that resided in the city either all disappeared for some reason, maybe the nail had some effect where it would transport all the people or make them spontaneously combust. 
What's interesting is that the upside down city in the chasm existed for longer than Kanria ever did, and it already had these cubey, boxy looking rocks, meaning that this type of magic existed for more than 500 years, which is before the Cataclysm and possibly all the way to the time when Fanes, the primordial one, still existed. What's more is that if this was really the Sustainer's doing, then that means that the Sustainer was present when either the Second War happened, as well as existing in the same timeline as veins, but the sustainer is not disclosed to be on either side yet. Her existence being present in a time way before the cataclysm is highly possible. The next interesting thing about the sustainer is that in the chasm, in Conria, and in the opening scene is that she or her box magic didn't really display any killing intent. The explosions that you see from the opening trailer were all from the travelers and not the sustainer. She was merely deflecting and blocking all of our attacks. We also know that she didn't just kill us out right in the opening scene, as well as our sibling, for some reason, not displaying intent on chasing after the sustainer compared to us. Rather, our sibling wants to topple Celestia instead of going after the sustainer. But whether or not the sustainer is part of Celestia's order of gods, we can't really assume just yet. Next is the scene where we find Kanria in ruins, which also shows the sustainer's boxy magic. Now, nobody really knows if she was the person or the god who destroyed Kanria, but to the assumption of the Traveler MC, which is us, it was the Sustainer. But the MC does mention that it was a vague memory. So what we saw in that flashback was a kinda-ish, maybe so type of memory. But looking at Kanria from our sibling's perspective, Kanria is covered by the boxy magic we see of the Sustainer. But we also see its near idle nature. Our sibling also wants to go after Celestia compared to us, the MC, who just wants to find out who and where the Sustainer is and get our powers back. The MC Traveler doesn't even gloss about thinking of Celestia, or ever wondered why our sibling is so focused on rebuilding the Abyss instead of finding the Sustainer. So judging from this, the Sustainer isn't really the real reason Hanria went Possibly, and not entirely, but the Sustainer is related to the Cataclysm because of this boxy magic. So if we assume that the Sustainer was responsible for those boxy magics being in Conria in the Cataclysm, then we can also assume that from the movement and nature of the rock formations in the deepest part of the chasm are also the Sustainer's magic. Now as I said before, it looks like it was stopping the nail from landing or at least trying to minimize the effects of the nail by covering it up with the boxy magic. Sadly, the city in the chasm was also destroyed and buried under the land that we now know as as Liwe. There's nothing else other than what I've previously said about the chasm, but in summary, the sustainer's magic and the rock formations looks very similar, and the fact that it was chasing the nail seems like it was protecting the chasm, which further lets up that the sustainer might be doing some good despite what happened when we first meet her. Finally to our point in what the sustainer's job would really be. Theoretically, as someone who upholds principles, be it heavenly or human slash mortal rules set in stone, the duty of a sustainer in general should be to be unbiased and enforce what is written in those principles. Whether or not a mortal or a divine being is at fault, she needs to act in accordance with those principles regardless. Even the Archons need to be careful about the so-called erosion that they need to resist or keep in place, since it's what the heavenly principles dictate. Think of it this way, in a flat scale with good and evil on either side, Celestia and or the Abyss can be seen on both depending on what you believe in. So let's say you believe Celestia is good and the Abyss is evil, then it would look like this. But in the middle of that scale is the heavenly principles as well as the sustainer. The sustainer being, well, the sustainer of heavenly principles is the judge or the person who oversees that scale. Anyone who dares to move closer to the middle and go across to the other side gets bonked by the sustainer be it divine or mortal. But the problem here isn't that the sustainer only punishes the mortals and barely saves these kingdoms as we've seen from the chasm and possibly from Conria. It's possible that the rules set by Celestia itself is way too inclined 
to their own benefit. But this is also what I think of the sustainer currently in our timeline. This perspective doesn't really back up why her boxy magic would be in the chasm trying to save the city, as well as why the box magic would be seen protecting instead of destroying the cities like what we see from the nails. Remember when I said that the primordial one might have lost and the second one took over? Well maybe one of the shades is the sustainer, and the second one basically changed her duties, or maybe the sustainer was corrupted in some way. And now after trying to save the cities of the old world, she now has to do the second one's bidding. And she is also forced to follow these so-called heavenly principles set by the second one who theoretically beat the sustainer. But that's gonna be for another theory in another video. And sadly, this is also where I'll end this one too. Again, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you want to see more of my videos. I post nearly every week, so getting notified of my videos would help both me and you in getting to know more of the outlandish lore and theories of Genshin. Also, comment below what you think of this new little rambling theory of mine. It's all loose and there isn't really much reference to look for, but it sparks the interest of why the chasm has those boxy looking things, as well as why Kanria would have those idle looking boxes, and why the sustainer didn't kill us outright if we were a problem in the first place. Before I end my video, I want to say that I do have a Twitch account for random streams and a Twitter account that I am getting the hang of using. They're mostly shit posts and some reveal posts about my avatar, but I would appreciate it if you guys put some followers on both the Twitch and my Twitter account, as well as check out every post that I do every now and then. I'll be gone for now, but be sure to wait for my next video, yeah? Bye!